Hello everyone, today I want to explain a very interesting topic to you which announced just a few days ago in Microsoft uh, Business Application Summit which used to be called as a Data Insight Summit as you can see here, this Data Insight Summit was for 2017, this year it is called Microsoft Business Application Summit which is quite a big conference talking about all different features of Power BI in Seattle right now that I'm recording this video, this conference is running in Seattle. Uh, there was a lot of announcement in this conference. One of these announcements was about a new feature in Power BI Desktop, which is creating composite models. Uh, this, from my point of view, is one of the great uh, features that is added. It's a major update in Power BI Desktop. With composite model, you can create a model that has a part of the model coming direct query from a data source like SQL Server database, Oracle, Teradata, and another part of it coming from another data source like Excel as import data. Previously using direct query, you couldn't combine data sources together. I have written a blog, um, some blog posts about direct query previously and I've also, I always mentioned that you cannot combine data sources together. Now with this new feature, you can combine data sources together, one data source as a direct query, if it is let's say huge table, and another data source, another table as a import data. Your dimension can be your import data and your uh, fact table can be direct query. Uh, along with this feature, a few other features also added, like ability to create many-to-many -many relationships in Power BI Desktop, and also ability to set the storage mode for every table. You can set the storage mode to be either import or direct query or dual storage mode, which is uh, an interesting feature in Power BI Desktop. So let's have a look at this, uh, how this all works. Here I have a Power BI desktop, uh, make sure you download the July edition 2018 or later. Uh, this feature is at the moment preview, so you have to go to the file setting, um, to the file options and settings options. You have to enable this preview feature. Uh, under preview features, this is the place that you enable it. Let me zoom in to this section so you can see it exactly what I mean. So this is composite model feature. You need to enable it. After enabling it, you need to close your Power BI desktop, open it again. Now, when you open it again, let's see how this feature works. I connect to a SQL Server data source to get data from it. I connect to my uh, local SQL Server data source and I choose direct query. Um, direct query is an option for a number of data sources. SQL Server is one of those. Um, Usually, if it is the first time you are connecting to that data source, it will ask you for credential and then it will list uh, all tables that I have under that data source, which in this case, I'm selecting a fact table from this data source and load. Uh, because it's a direct query connection, with direct query connection, you never load the data into Power BI. You've seen that was very quick because data is not loaded in Power BI. It is just creating the connection in Power BI. Metadata is in Power BI. As you can see here, we have only two tabs, um, the report tab and the relationship tab. You can set the relationships of this table with other tables, but you cannot see any data because there is no data stored in Power BI. <clears throat> where the data is stored, data is stored in the data source wherever it is. Every time you have a visual, it will query data to the data source and the result comes back. That is how uh, direct query works. Now, uh, and, and also you can see at the bottom of this that storage mode is direct query. Okay, now let's bring another data source. I'll go to uh, get data again. This time I select Excel. Excel is a data source that does not support direct query at all. And I'm selecting Excel version of Adventure Books Data Warehouse. If you are interested to download the Excel version of it, just check my blog post. I have uh, posted links for that. Uh, and I select one of these dimensions, dim customer, for example. And look, because this data source is an import data source, it is different from that data source. So it will load that data into Power BI. Uh, so uh, it is asking for a question from you. That question went to my other screen. So let me bring it here. Too many screens. Okay, so this is the question that you will be uh, 
uh, this is the warning that you will be seeing that if you combine data sources from different places together there is a potential security risk that data from one of your data sources may be used to pass query into uh, to pass um, some parameters into the query sending to the other data source do you want it or not i would say just okay and that brings us to the new mode which is composite mode in this composite mode you can have one um, table or more table import data, one or more table direct query. Uh, the difference here is that now I can see the data tab. It is not just pure direct query. When I go to the data tab, if I select dim customer, I see the data of dim customer because dim customer is loaded into Power BI. But if I select fact table, you can see here that it says fact table use direct query and cannot be shown. So I have one table getting data from the data source, another table loaded into Power BI. And when you hover on these, you will see some information about this. This is saying that fact internet sales storage mode is direct query. And this is where it is coming from. So later on, when you have like 10 tables, you want to find out which table is direct query, which table is import data. You can figure it out with just hovering on this. Also, when you go back to the report mode, at the bottom of that, you will see a storage mode is mixed. So this is composite model. With composite model, you can have these tables uh, working with each other. You can even create relationship between these two tables. I'll go to the relationship tab and I create a relationship between fact table and customer based on customer key. Now, there is, a <clears throat> there is an important uh, thing to consider right now here relationship between an import data table and a direct query table should be many to many uh, even if the many to many is not something that makes sense for that relationship which is quite a bit um, odd here but it's a preview feature so we will see some enhancement in this scenario as you can see here i have many to many relationships so that's also a new feature added in power bi uh, you can choose the many to many relationships and it works. If you choose any other relationships, this does not allow you to click on OK. The only relationship you get at the moment is many to many relationship. Many to many relationship is useful for some other scenarios. In this scenario, customer key is unique in my customer table. So it doesn't need to be many to many. But anyway, it's a mm, limitation at the moment. We have to select many to many. OK, I'll select that and I create the relationship. It creates the relationship and you can see the direction of relationship at the moment is from fact table which I don't want this to be in that way I change it to both directional to make sure that customer table can filter fact table. now I go to the report and um, I bring some um, visualization here with sales amount and education English education from customer table these two tables are from totally two separate data sources. One of them is direct query, another is import data. And as you can see in this uh, report, they can play nicely together in a visualization with the power of composite mode. Previously, if you wanted to use this feature, you had to import everything into Power BI. And when you import everything into Power BI, you have a big limitation. Limitation is that you cannot have uh, Power BI file more than one gigabyte size. With this feature, you can still have a very large table, a very large fact table, hundreds of billions of records in that fact table and a direct query and then using other tables as import data. Now, with this feature, I also mentioned that there is something else came in, storage mode of each table. Now, for each table, you have a separate storage mode. You need to right click on the table and go to properties then you will see a section here that explain what is the storage mode of that table. Storage mode is import for dim customer and for fact table is direct query. If you select this section, you see there is also another storage mode called dual. Dual storage mode is uh, for direct query tables that you want to keep a copy of that table inside uh, Power BI as well, just in case that if you have a slicer, if you have a filter, it doesn't send a query every time to a database. It will make things faster. You cannot switch from import to dual. This is only an option that you can choose on a, uh, on a 
direct query storage mode. So I can change it to dual. I will get an information that uh, this will depend the time of refresh because if the table is big, this will take lots of time. You do not want to copy everything into this uh, model, but this is how dual works. Now I have a copy of that here and for purpose of slicers, for purpose of small um, operations that needs just one column or things like that, it will not go back to the database. Uh, so, uh, conclusion, what do you get with uh, composite mode? Composite mode will give you ability to combine a source, direct query source, with a very large database table, like 100 millions of rows, um, billions of rows, into Power BI without importing data, because it is direct query. Uh, but now you can combine it with other sources in Power BI using composite mode, bring some other tables, your dimension tables, as Excel file, as other data sources, and it will per play nicely together. You get the new storage mode. You can choose is the storage mode is direct query or dual, which keeps a copy of that table into memory of Power BI. Not a good idea for big tables, for small tables. And you get the many-to-many -many relationships, which you need to be very careful when you are using many-to-many -many relationships. This type of relationship will give you lots of flexibility, but still you need to be sure that you are doing the right modeling. If you do the right modeling in a BI data warehouse schema, you never need many-to-many -many relationships. There are very rare situations that you need it. I have written about these features, and um, the blog post that you see right down below is explaining all of these. Uh, one thing, very important thing that you need to know, this feature is right now a preview feature. If you, you can play with it, you can work with it in Power BI Desktop, but you cannot publish it into the Power BI service. These features at the moment works only in Power BI Desktop. I got one of the comments in my blog post that what is the use if this is only in Power BI Desktop, there is no use for that. Um, it will be available in Power BI service very soon. It is just a preview. Test it out, and if you have any feedbacks, give it to Power BI team. They will enhance it for you, definitely, and eventually it will be available in Power BI service. If you are interested to learn more about Power BI, go ahead and subscribe to uh, our channel down below, and you can read a step-by-step -step blog post of this video down below as well. Thank you for watching.